Pablo Escobar had the greatest empire in trafficking history. He earned $420 million per week, which is $22 billion per year. And he would write off $2.2 billion each year for unbelievable reasons. Escobar made so much money that if he was alive today, he would be at 15th place on Forbes billionaires list. Today, we will uncover the ways he managed to build his empire and how the empire has fallen. First, a short disclaimer. Escobar was a horrible person, but he had some good business knowledge and we can learn and implement some of this knowledge. Also for the word, we will use white gold. His lifestyle was out of this world with many luxurious villas, planes, yachts, exotic animals, and a business that supplied 90% of the world's white gold supply. Pablo ruined millions of lives and changed Colombia forever. His terrible actions will be forever remembered. But Pablo wasn't always an evil narco-terrorist. He was a son of a farmer and a teacher. Pablo was ambitious from a young age. In his own words, he wanted to be big. By that, he meant he wanted to be president of Colombia. Pablo studied political science. He did okay, but he ran out of money and needed to quit. Now, some people say that this was his turning point to crime. But after leaving college, he would open a bike repair shop. He didn't earn much money. Then he got an idea to steal tombstones. Yeah, pretty creative idea. That was his entrance to crime. But still, this wasn't enough. Pablo got in contact with a guy that sold Reynolds cars. Here, he started to go deeper in the crime world. The scheme was the Reynolds guy would sell a car, but he would keep a spare key. When a car would be sold, Pablo would take the Reynolds car back and then they would resold the car. As the crime life would take him over, he would soon start to kidnap people and sometimes end their lives. It is obvious that there is no more hope for him. So he started working with a local trafficker named Alvaro Pietro, who made Pablo a millionaire by 22. Still, it wasn't enough for him. Pablo wanted a bigger slice, so he went to Ecuador and bought 5 kilo of Peruvian white gold paste. He drove back to Medellin and processed it there. Then he sold it to another local trafficker named Fabio Restrepo for close to $100,000. Restrepo died two months after the deal. Now was it Pablo or someone else? We don't know. But what we know is that Pablo, together with three Ochoa brothers, Gacha and Carlos Lender, would form the Medellin cartel. They would start to buy land, more precisely, white gold plantations in multiple countries. The interesting thing about this business is that the cartels set the price of the product, and the product is highly addictive. As the business grew, he bought a plane, then another one, then the whole fleet. Pablo would use every empty space on the plane to fill it with the product. They even filled the tires with white gold. In the Bahamas, the cartel owned an island, so the large planes would land there to refuel and would transfer the product to smaller planes. Those smaller planes would land in Florida. The island had a hotel, one kilometer long stripe for planes, warehouses for the product, and a harbor. They would make five to seven flights per day, in which they would smuggle 15 tons of white gold. One kilo of that sold for 50 to 70 thousand dollars. And the cost the cartel would have is thousand dollars for making the product and four thousand dollars to transport it. That means the daily profits were 60 million dollars. The pilots made $500,000 per flight. Few flights and you can retire your grand-grand-grand-grandchildren. They owned 8% of USA's white gold supply and 90% of the global supply. Pablo monopolized the business, owning the supply and distribution. If you knew someone was using the product back in the days, it most likely came from Pablo. But this wasn't the only way to smuggle the product. Pablo had two submarines, which he would fill up with white gold. They would also parachute the product on the open sea to boats. And the last way was by exporting legal products like wine, jeans, and so on, and then extracting the product from it with a chemical way. Pablo earned $420 million per week, which made him $22 billion per year. He was one of the richest people on the planet, being in the Forbes list for seven years. And he was the only guy with cash, not like the other guys who had their wealth in stocks. But that was also the problem, the cash. It's not legal money, you can't store it in a bank. So Pablo would store it in the barrels, walls, warehouses and bury it underground. That's a pretty good problem to not know where to store your money. He would spend $1000 per week 
on rubber bands and each year would write off 10% of the income due to the money eaten by rats. That 10% is $2.2 billion. You can buy a sports team for that money and still have some money left to buy a private island. Pablo was then worth around $30 billion, which would be around $76 billion today. If he was alive today, he would be on 15th place in Forbes billionaires list, sharing the place with Surgery Brain, the co-founder of Google. He was living life that most of us can't even imagine. But all empires fall. In the 80s, Pablo wanted to achieve his goal of becoming president. His first step was to get into politics. He managed to become a congressman in the Colombian parliament. With that position, he got judicial immunity, which means he couldn't get convicted for any crime under Colombian law, and also got a diplomatic visa so he could travel everywhere. That was amazing for him. He had luxurious villas in the US, like in Florida, but one day at the office, Minister of Justice of Colombia, Rodrigo Lara, decided to expose Escobar about his real business and his influence in politics with corruption. Pablo's policy of doing business was bribe everyone and the famous plata o plomo, silver or lead. Lara took bribe from Escobar and admitted everything. Next day, Colombia news was full of what Pablo does for a living. That became the beginning of the end. His diplomatic status was taken. His exotic animals were taken. 142 planes, 20 helicopters, and 32 yachts. Pablo Escobar had 140 homes in Colombia, all taken. He had a Robin Hood image. He would build whole neighborhoods in Colombia, churches, sport objects. Pablo simply knew that he would be safer if the public loved him, but he would order the assassination of Lara, and that move would bring the attention of the US government and the extradition law. Pablo offered to pay Colombia's national debt, which was $10 billion. He was richer than his own country, but of course, they refused. He was responsible for thousands of deaths by ordering assassinations of 4,000 people whose occupation was judges, journalists, officers, and he bombed a plane. Colombia's government saw that there is no way, so they made a deal with him to put him in his own prison that he designed, which had a spa, club, gym, and everything a luxurious villa had. But then the government decided to move him to a real prison, and then he escaped. He was hunted by everyone, and December 1993 was the end of Pablo Escobar. After Pablo, everything collapsed, the whole business. In Pablo's time, the Medellin cartel was so big that it could be listed in Fortune 500 companies. Pablo himself was, in 1990, the second richest person on the planet, after the Sultan of Brunei. He accumulated so much wealth in a short time, but it got lost much quicker. His family didn't get anything, because the rival cartels took all their money. And because of Pablo's paranoia, he didn't want to tell people where he hid his money. The money is believed to be in Escobar's ex-states in Colombia, US, etc. It is said that the Colombian government only found $75 million of Pablo's money, so most of it is still lost. Looking realistically, a lot of that buried money was taken by Mother Nature. This was one of the most controversial videos that we ever made. I have watched Narcos a few years ago, an amazing series, but while doing this research, there was much more things to uncover. As Pablo's personality was, he was an amazing businessman and one of the most successful self-made billionaires of all time, but he was a horrible person. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. Subscribe, don't start a drug empire please.